Hello everybody, I was down here, I was in a beautiful uh, a King's Park Botanic Garden, which is actually just a little island of habitat in beautiful Perth, Australia, seeing some shit, some real wild shit, you know, stuff will blow your mind, make you feel like you're on a bad acid trip, actually a pretty good acid trip, let's call it that, because everything here is pretty wonderful. Here's a pretty interesting genus, Anigoxanthus. And this is uh, colloquially known as kangaroo paws. I really kind of just only know them from seeing them in tacky gardens in Berkeley, uh, you know, in neighborhoods where they'd call the cops on someone like me. But to see them in their, their native ecology is pretty remarkable. Uh, you can see the pollination here is pretty... Uh, you can easily see what's going on in terms of uh, the pollination mechanism. They're basically they're pollinated by birds right in there. You got a nice little uh, nectar gland. You got a lot of bunch of sugary bullshit down in there and that little... Uh, swollen base of this uh, corolla right there and you can see this there's, uh, there's a species uh, actually there's a whole like a uh, clad of birds i believe i think they call them honey eaters that come down they land on there you know they can't hover they're not like hummingbirds they can't hover but they come down here they perch on there and then they stick their little proboscis their little birdie proboscis beak in there and get the sugar and then in doing so they get just the, the lightest dusting right on their noggins right on their heads of pollen as you can see uh, going on so uh, anyway, the, the colors on everything here is really blowing my mind. Everything is so brightly colored and just fucking incredible. You could see coming up in a family, and this is Hemodoraceae. Over here, uh, you got the, one of the more famous uh, uh, Australian, uh, it's called the, the grass tree, basically, Xanthoria. It looks, you know, it's it kind of got a convergent evolution thing going on with agaves, basal rosetta leaves, and then a inflorescence that comes up i don't believe these are they're not monocropic actually that's right because they can get pretty big you can see there's a big one over there supposedly they only grow about a centimeter a year so you got to figure something that's standing four feet tall is christ what almost a hundred years old probably here's the inflorescence on it the buds the flowers aren't open on it but when they do so it's got kind of a nice scabrous texture like that i want you to beat me with that anyway when the when the flowers do open up to just be hundreds of flowers going off there uh you can see Oh yeah, there's another thing I want to show you, okay? So if you take one of these little grass pieces off and you look at it, you can see it's square in cross section. See that? See how it's a little square? It's, 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 I guess that's more of like a rhombus, you know? But then again, I failed the, uh, I failed the, the uh, what the shit is, a geometry class? I don't know what the hell it is. Anyway, it's, it's a relatively square structure. Uh, on the cross section of those leaves right there just covered in all the resins and shit coming up over here you know this just looks like uh, your normal gaudy canary island pine another uh, horticultural atrocity overplanted in california uh, however it's got no relation to palms at all in fact it's not even an angiosperm it's not even a flowering plant this is a species of cycad uh, in the genus macrozamia and, uh, technically they're a conifer you can see the cones right there you know and so basically what you got going on here is just a little piece of native habitat that wasn't paved over. You know, you got, you know, yuppie spandex bikers over there, you know, s scooting around. You got, you know, probably some cruisers hanging out in their cars. Just a typical wonderful urban park scene, uh, you know, but uh, they, they left the native habitat intact, you know. Those pink things over there, those are a species uh, of gladiolus that are not native here. They're from South Africa. They get loose. This is a, a species in the pea family called Jacksonia. It's too bad we ain't got no flowers because I'd like to show you. They're pretty nice. Uh, another cool plant. Oh, yeah, there you go. This is a carnivore species of Drosera. There's a lot of species in the genus Drosera, which is a genus that we also get in the United States, of course, the sundews. You just take a little look. Get, get, get pretty close. You just give it a quick banger scope, you know. See, they just got those, uh, those basically, yeah, those, those things that just secrete, I don't know what to call them, trichomes or just glands or what, but they secrete uh, nectars that draw the bugs in, and then they, uh, basically the bug gets stuck in those, those hairs, basically enclose the bug, and then slowly digest it. And again, it's an adaptation to that the relatively nutrient-poor, leached, sandy soil that they're growing on right here. So this this juicy bastard right here okay again this yeah it just looks like a kind of nondescript bush with some white you know fluffy bullshit on it this is actually a member of the proteaceae which is one of the fucking weirdest you know it's it's proteaceae okay is almost entirely southern hemisphere i think it is southern hemisphere i don't know uh, no need to correct me if i'm wrong i don't give a shit anyway so proteaceae uh, is a huge family in australia and in south africa it's a relatively 
thought to be at least an ancient lineage. So it's one of the earlier members of uh, of uh, you know the branch. I think they, I think they came out during a campaign was when they're big, yeah, roughly eighty five million years ago. So late Cretaceous is when they had their day in the sun. I mean, they have their day in the sun now, but when they blew up, you know, when they got big, when they had their debut. Okay, so this is a, a genus called Grevillea in Proteaceae. And, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention Proteaceae. This will blow your fucking mind. Guess what their closest living, their closest extant relative is? Platinaceae. Platinus, fucking sycamores. Really weird, huh? They're both pretty old uh, lineages, though. Anyway, so this is Grevillea. And you get up close, you look at their flowers. Their flowers will fucking blow your mind because they're very odd. So those little antenna-looking things poking out, that's technically the style uh, coming out of four valvate. That is just, uh, they come apart at the seams, you know, they don't overlap. The four valvate tepals, okay? But then you got this little bug antenna thing coming out. That's the style. That's also what presents the pollen. Similar to the sunflower family, Asteraceae. I don't know if you would technically call it a secondary pollen presentation like you would in, a, in Asteraceae. So either way, that style unfurls. It comes out of the cup. And it's, it, it, it comes out of a fused cup that the teeples are. And then it, it basically in doing so, when it first comes out, it's got a bunch of pollen. It's got a bunch of, a big glob of pollen on it. And then, you know, that'll, uh, you know, get dusted off on pollinators and what this shit. And then after that, the secondary phase, once all the pollen's moved, then it turns into that same appendage, turns into the female phase and is ready to receive pollen. The fruit on these and on many Proteaceae is technically a follicle. So it's just a, a capsule that opens at only one seam, and then you crack this bastard open. There should be a little winged fruit in there. I don't think I can even do it. It's so goddamn woody. I don't even know if I can get it out. Let me see if I can get this, crack this bastard open. You hear that? You hear those fucking birds? Those are they're Australian ravens. They sound like dying cats. Okay, there you go. There's there's the seed. Shit, this, this isn't coming out. Anyway. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. There's the little seed. Anyway, Grevillea, Proteaceae, everybody. Weird goddamn, uh, you know, pollination going on on these. The whole, you know, in terms of exposing the pollen, the whole, uh, the, the way the flowers work. This is a tiny one. Some of these fucking things, the Banksias get cones that are the size of a football on them. They look like a cone, but they're a flowering plant. Proteaceae is a weird goddamn family. You're going to be seeing a lot more of it, and you're going to hear my loud ass, my loud, obnoxious ass talking to it about it a lot more. Now, you see this wispy bastard right here? This is Alocasserina. Looks like a pine, doesn't it? Except it's not. It's technically a flowering plant. Get up there. Just take a look at those leaves. Could you call these leaves? Are they technically photosynthetic stems? But you look over here, and you got... See that thing coming out? That's not a branch. That's a parasite. And the remarkable thing about this parasite, which, again, is in the tropical mistletoe family, Lauranthaceae, is that it looks just like the foliage on it from a distance looks just like the Alocasserina. But then you get up close... And you see, that's a little bit more succulent. You can obviously see it's it's obviously a lot different when you get up close to it. All right, there's the parasite, and then here is the host. Okay, but the remarkable thing here, though, is you got to think, why did this evolve to so closely resemble uh, the host? Is it just chance? I don't think so. Probably, you know, a lot of shit finds this uh, Aloe Cassarina unpalatable, and so uh, in doing so, it... You know, to, this tries to blend in, you know, because maybe this, maybe if you were an herbivore, you want to gnaw on this a little, a little bit, uh, a little bit more than you would gnaw on this, you know. This doesn't, maybe this doesn't have the uh, toxic compounds, you know. So it says I'm going to blend in and look like, look like the host. So if a parasite doesn't have any green, it's got no chlorophyll, and it's just stealing all its food from the host. But if a parasite has chlorophyll and it could photosynthesize, produce some of its own carbs, uh, then that's called being hemiparasitic which uh, this species in the Lauranthaceae is. Pretty interesting thing going on, you know. It's, uh, it, it blends in so goddamn well. Again, this is Alocasserina. Another genus in the family is Casserina. They look like pines. Uh, again, you commonly see them planted in California. Out of context, there's uh, horticultural atrocities, but to see them in their native ecology where they've evolved over millions of years is pretty goddamn fabulous. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's the flowers on that Jacksonia. Banner wings and keel, just like a typical uh, papillinaceous uh, member of the, uh, the pea family. Papillinaceous just refers to the subfamily. Remember, you got the, well, now you guys see you got five or six subfamilies, but you used to only have three subfamilies of the pea family. Say salpinia, 
uh, subfamily, the mimosa subfamily, and the uh, Faboidae subfamily, which is the biggest, at like 13,000 species. This, of course, is Faboidae subfamily, but just look at the color on these. They're fucking, look how bright that is. It's it's crazy. Again, no leaves, just uh, photosynthesizing through the stems, you know, and kind of spiky. If I were to get naked and fall over into this, it might hurt a little bit, you know. A nice view of the bush over there with the invasive glade. Now, this this family I was studying or I was reading about because it's a closely allied. It's a sister clade to the Asteraceae. This is a species in the Goudiniaceae family. Kind of a weird flower structure, huh? It was like five five corolla lobes just spread out. Then a, I don't know what the fuck is going. On. Oh, then you oh, look at that too. You got so you got this little dangly thing. Is that the style? Look at it. Goudiniaceae is the family. I'm gonna have to figure out which this one is, but uh, you got quite a few Goudiniaceae members. And I, like I said, I think the family is mostly well, the family is all Southern Hemisphere. I think you might get a couple in South America, but uh, actually, the whole family might be endemic to Australia. I'll have to check this one out. Anyway, regardless, Goudiniaceae is the family. Over here, you got a more of those Drosseras, Macranthera. Look at those the sundews, those carnivores. You can see them real nice. It's a pretty healthy one, too. You see, yeah, we'll get Drosseras in California, but they're tiny. You know, real tiny little, I mean, almost like the size of a penny. But these are getting, these are pretty big. Look at that. See, there you go. Just appreciate that. Look at those, look at those glands. Look at those sugary little nectar droplets. You know, saying, just come here. Let me love you. And then eat you. Isn't that nice? Isn't that a nice sentiment? Right, anyway, here you go. Conostylus, uh, this is a, not a relative of uh, the kangaroo pod at Anigo Xanthus. Conostylus is a genus in that one. This over here, remember I was telling you about the Proteaceae, the weird bastards? A lot of diversity in Australia, a lot of diversity in the Finbos habitat in South Africa. This is a species of Banksia. This is Banksia elicifolia. Okay, you you just fuck. Look at look at that. What's what's look what's going on over here? So those are all, all these 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 are all styles, all presented pollen, and it's just it's got you know sclerophyllous leaves. That's a word you hear a lot, sclerophyllous, which just means hard, leathery, uh, waxy leaves. You know, it's kind of an adaptation to the subtropical dry thing they got going on here. Though it is technically a Mediterranean climate, and they're very hard and painful leaves to touch too, like I'm doing right now. Okay, and then if you could get, if I could just get it close, let me see if I could show you one of the buds, because they got these bracts encircling the buds, and they look like, there you go, the bracts, they almost look like phyleries on, a, on an Asteraceae bud. Proteaceae are so fucking weird, I just, I don't know, this is so new to me, you know, I'm learning with you, except, you know, you're probably doing bong rips and eating some food right now, I'm just out here in a bush, kind of sw sweating my ass off in a blazing sun, and uh, you Proteaceae, though, look at it, just... You know, you you see these and you almost think, okay, those are stamens, but they're not. The stamens and the anthers are inside those uh, those four valvate peoples. Just what the fuck? It's just so it's such a weird goddamn family. You know, and almost entirely southern hemisphere. There's another one. Look at that new. Look at the freshies. Look at the new growth. This hasn't hardened off yet. So you got Banksia elicifolia, and then you got attenuata. Uh, over there, and it's got the big cones. Look at a big ass grass tree, too. Xanthoria. Bad hair day for that. Here's another nice Proteaceae. You know, you could have a Sclerophyllus daydream over here. Look at it. Look, so, this is a species in the genus Petrophily. Look at that leathery foliage. Very stiff, hard, spiny. Again, if I were to get naked and just jump into this and try to hug it, I'd come out just covered in a couple different scratches, some bloody scratches and shit. You know, it's good. Kind of reminds you of the pain of the world sometimes, you know, which is nice. Anyway, here's the uh, the inflorescence. Here's, uh, this one's, uh, of course, just starting. I don't even think, I think the style should be coming out soon. But you can more clearly see those four vol valvate tepals right there. Yeah, that's not even mature yet. And then you get over here, you know, there's one that's just done. So that's the fruit. See, and he's opened up already, and the, the little seeds came out. Crazy, huh? Bread of sporus, I think. When you got bread of sporus fruits, it's when you get some woody ass fruits, you know, that just uh, basically open in response to heat. These, it looks like, just open on their own, but a lot of the
proteas open a response to heat. They're fire adapted. You get a lot of fire adapted vegetation here. I think it's called being bradysporous fruits. You get woody fruits and shit. Those, they're actually lignified fruits. They're, they're, they're hard fruits that then open and, uh, you know, uh, let their seeds out in response to the heat, like a low grown bushfire or, uh, Sometimes, you know, some of them, if you just dehiss them from the plant, and it's a hot day, they'll, they'll open. I'm sure if you, you know, say you got a fruit of these, you cut it off, put it in the dashboard of your car, park it in the sun, you know, that'll open it too. At least that's what does it with California cypress cones. So, and everything, you oh, this species of junkers, see carrots over there and shit. I don't really pay attention to them because they're just the graminoids. No offense. Look at that. Grevillea. Oh, here's, an, here's another grevillea over here. Another Sclerophyllus, member of the Sclerophyllus Daydream Club, you know? Look at it. There's the new, there's the new tissue, still pretty soft, and then you go further back and it's just, it's hard, spiky, leathery, you know, and it's, uh, you know, kind of a, it's got these auriculate, uh, auriculate leaves, too. Another species of Grevillea. You can see this, you can see the styles up there. On those proteoid flowers. Oh, so this beautiful bastard, these flower in the winter, which is the northern hemisphere summer. So it's spring down here right now, even though it's October, and I'm a little late for this. But this is another Proteaceae, Banksia menziesii. You can see there's a flower. It's just finishing up, all those styles poking out, and then uh, there's the cone. You can see that uh, Bradysporus little cone, just ready. To, you know, it's already. I think it's already dumped out the seed, you know, but it's open. And then of course here's the uh, the le the leaves on them. You know, super leathery. You know, it'd be nice to get slapped around with that. They get the dentate margin, you know. Little, I guess it's more of a serrated margin. Pretty nice. Emerging leaf right there. That's, that's pretty, huh? Look at that. Real fuzzy. Nice, nice indumentum on there. Nice fuzzy indumentum. So this is a pro... You know, the pro, the proteas I've shown you before are just little shrubs. This this delicate fuck gets big. Look at that. He's a 30-foot tall tree right there. Banksy is a huge genus down here. Huge genus uh, in Australia, a lot of diversity. You can see it's just, it's, I mean, it's everywhere. It's one of the dominant, you know? And so Banksia, Banksia and Eucalyptus are two, two very big genera down here, uh, you know, in Southwest Australia. There's the Banksia menziesii fruit. And I'm actually gonna do something pretty nice here. I'm gonna try to piss off two ridiculous demographics of people at once. Both the super soft hippies who want to have a really nice rosy view of the world and get mad at some loudmouth fuck like me from Chicago who presents a, you know, a kind of misanthropic dark viewpoint on a human, uh, the modern human, human condition. And, uh, and then I'm going to piss off, of course, just the obsolete grandpas that deny climate change because they're always fun to fuck with. No offense, guys. I'm sorry. Like I said, I'll give you a massage or buy you some cookies or something. Anyway, so Banksia woodland, this type of habitat, this kind of low growing, sun exposed, rather open habitat, kind of the equivalent of California chaparral, uh, is actually declining all over southwest Australia. That's because, one, you got the human tumor just keeps growing to build more shitty suburbs and more futureless tract housing where you got to drive everywhere and you know everybody hates each other, everyone's on Prozac, uh, everyone's denying the reality of their lives, etc. And then, uh, of course, climate change is the other thing. You know, it just doesn't, they don't get as much rain here as they used to uh, back in the day. So the climate's drying out, and this this park actually, this uh, which is technically it's all native here. They just it's, they didn't plant it, they didn't restore it, they just never fucked with it to begin with. They were thinking about having to almost you know do supplemental irrigation in some areas because it's drying out so bad. So you just got more native habitat losing ground uh, to this you know this this obsolete thing that we're doing here on planet Earth. This kind of silly thing which is just treating anything that doesn't directly benefit us like it's garbage and shit and you could just sweep it away and uh, then you could just build, a, whether it's agriculture, just more human infrastructure, agriculture, depressing tract housing, strip malls, you know, the type of things that have made me want to die and puke and throw up since I was about, I don't know, 12 or 10 years old. I had kind of a rough childhood. So uh, anyway, it, you know, it's going on all over the world. You can expect to see more of it. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be this way, of course, but there's been a void of leadership on this issue. And again, we're still relatively infantile as a species, at least in our evolution. We just haven't really come to value things that don't directly benefit us. You know, there's no idea of just leaving it the fuck alone. You know, E.O. Wilson had a good book about that called Half Earth. He's just saying, just set aside half the earth. Don't fuck with it. Don't, don't you don't got to make something. Don't get crafty. Don't get ideas. You don't got to get all fancy. Just leave it the fuck alone, let it do its thing, and it'll be better off for all of us. You know, there's a payoff in that. There's a value in that. 
Of course, trying to get the 8 billion morons to see that is a little tricky right now. Anyway, there you go. Bank CMNZ, CIA, everybody. It might not be around uh, in its current state in 100 years. This habitat might all be gone. We'll see. We're going to do a little banger crash course in distinguishing uh, eucalyptus from its closely allied genus, Corymbia. This is Eucalyptus marginata, and this is Corymbia, I think, uh, California. Anyway, uh, you look at the fruits. Obviously, they're different size. But when you look at the overall structure of them, they almost kind, they kind of look alike. It basically looks like a little urn, you know? Like, remember that scene in Big Lebowski when they put his urn in the coffee can? Oh, never mind. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anyway, so you got these little, these are the, the eucalyptus fruits. But the, the big difference, though, it comes when you look at the bark. Because the flowers on both of these, you can't really tell apart too much. Here's the bark on that karimi. It's kind of spongy and what this shit. When you look at the bark on that eucalyptus, it's more stringy. But the big difference, you look at that... Uh, leaf they got a marginal vein so they got a vein going around if i can zoom in on this juicy bastard they got a vein going around the uh margin of the leaf right there a rather prominent vein see that little where it goes from like a dark green to a lighter green right there and then you look at the carimbia they don't have that uh that prominent vein on a margin you know it's a uh, it's a little different so anyway it's it's leaf structure it's hard but I guess when I looked at the, the molecular phylogenetics, it was valid. It was a, it's a valid differentiation. They're different enough to be two different genera. Eucalyptus, of course, is a lot bigger. I think there's like 800 species of euc down here. Okay, so, you know, Australia has some of the oldest, most ancient rocks in the world, which makes for some of the oldest soils in the world, which means they've been exposed and weathered a lot longer than in other areas on the planet. And as a result of that weathering, they're extremely... Uh, devoid of certain nutrients take phosphorus for instance you could see that that's just basically a bunch of sandy soil and shit you tried to grow some veggies in that you'd fail miserably because phosphorus is a limiting factor but evolution being what it is okay and given a plant a native plant uh, millions of years to evolve in an ecosystem evolution will find a way and that's where these juicy bastards come in what you're looking at is a proteoid root okay and many members of the Proteaceae have these. What it basically looks like, or what it's doing with all those little hairs and shit coming off that root is increasing its surface area, but not only increasing its surface area, but releasing a compound called carboxylate. And the purpose of carboxylate is to basically, quote, mine phosphorus from the soil. So it breaks down, the carboxylate goes in there, and it breaks down the sand and shit, it releases phosphorus, which then, uh, you know, phosphorus is no longer a limiting factor for this plant. And so you get a plant like this uh, Banksium and ZCI, which can, you know, grow up to be fucking 30 feet tall, completely unhindered by the lack of phosphorus in the soil that might otherwise hinder uh, other plants that would try to grow in this uh, very old, highly weathered, phosphorus deficient soil. Okay, real quick, uh, real quick banger intro to the uh, Corollas, the flowers of uh, the Proteaceae. Here's a nice one, Banksia HBI. These are ba these are the same flower at different stages. Okay, so one of those is composed of the, obviously you could see hundreds of these. Okay, and this is one that's already open, and this is one that has not opened yet. You could see what they got going on again. Four four tepals. They come undone here. They're still together. They basically furl back. They they open up. They furl all the way back, four valvate tepals, and then they expose that style. And again, you can see, if you look at some of those tepals close, you can see they're kind of cup-shaped like that. And then, see, look at this guy, right? Look at that one right there. That's still got the anthers on it. So the anthers, and a lot of them are fused to the tepals, and a lot of these bases, the proteases are fused to the tepals, and then that's how uh, that uh, pollen gets on its style. So it's again, four valvate tepals peeling back, same flower. This one's uh, in a later stage. This is full anthesis, basically full maturity. This one is not ready yet. This is this is not open yet. So there you go. It could be confusing as shit. Really weird uh, pollination going on here. Really, really weird, uh, you know, flower uh, structure and and floral strategy. Very interesting. And just look at it. So look at the, that inflorescence when it's going off. You can see why people fall in love with this goddamn family so much. Banksy, everybody. Protease. Oh, there you go. You could just see all these Australian magpies just mobbing that family, you know? <laughs> just mobbing that family, trying to get some goods, you know? It's, it's kind of interesting to watch. They learn quick, don't they, the magpies? 
fucking corvids. Okay, so I don't even know where to get into eucalyptus in terms of explaining, you know, what's going on with the, fl the floral strategy and how the flowers open and the whole floral morphology. But if I'm going to even start to touch upon it, which I'll just do very briefly, it seems uh, like a good idea to use the most beautiful and, uh, you know, certainly one of the largest uh, flowering eucalypts uh, that there is. At least the flowers are the largest. It doesn't get that tall. You can see it only tops out about maybe 12 feet. But uh, it's certainly got the largest flower. This is eucalyptus macrocarpa. And what you're looking at right there, remember these are in the Myrtaceae, same family as uh, guava. Uh, what you're looking at right there is basically just hundreds of goddamn stamens. Uh, and then in the central part, there would be a stigma down there. The petals on eucalyptus, you might be asking where the petals are, where's the corolla? This is what will blow your goddamn mind. See that cap right there? Those are the petals. Those are te This is technically the petals. And this cap basically comes off. Actually, maybe I shouldn't be doing this yet. I'm like undressing the thing. Anyway, that cap comes off. This has still got another day or two to go. That cap comes off. And when it does, that's when you end up with this. You just end up with basically bare bones flower, hundreds of stamens with a, a central a stigma and style of female sexy parts in there. You know, and these, these grow in what you call the quanga, the sand prairies, you know, north of here. Remember, a lot of that habitat, of course, is gone to, to make way for, for the human tumor. It'd be the, the human tumor. Uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of, basically, like, the, you know, agriculture shit like that. Probably some depressing suburbs that the, all the teenagers want to kill themselves in, uh, you know, closer to the city. But a lot of it's just agriculture. Now, a lot of the habitat's been destroyed, but you could see... It's just an incredible goddamn plant, and of course it being Myrtaceae, most of the Myrtaceae has the resins in here, so, you know, I'm going to touch this right now, it's, oh yeah, it's just, it smells amazing, you know, you get those eucalyptus, those old terpenes, sexy terpenes and resins and oils and shit, you know, basically, uh, what we're going to do for the obsolete uh, grandpas, I'm going to basically give them a massage with some sacred oils from India, calm them down when they're so tense, you know, trying to say that the sky isn't blue. Anyway, there you go. Eucalyptus macrocarpa, everybody. Beautiful goddamn tree. Remember, there's 800 species of eucalyptus in Australia. Quite a few. A uh, lot of evolution. It's, it's, it's been very successful here. And, uh, you know, the ones you get that are invasive in California are mostly eucalyptus globulus, the blue gums. A lot of the eucalyptus don't, uh, well, they don't form a soil seed bank, for one. They got tiny seeds. Uh, and they just, you know, they basically got to you really got to rely on eight years seeds to germinate. But they, they just they, they don't get as a lot of them don't get established like globulus does. A lot of them just can't really become invasive. Uh, it's just not wet enough in California form, etc. But there you go. You're going to be seeing a lot more of these. You're going to hear my loud ass talking about a lot more of this genus uh, in a coming uh, in a coming. There's another beautiful Proteaceae, Hachia rumbales, and with this shit. There you go. Look at one of those single flowers. First off, the yellow shit is the pollen. And that's, again, on the style, which unfurled from that uh, four-tepled uh, Corolla down there. Okay, and you can see on the inside of, you know, a couple of those tepals, you can still see the anthers, the, you know, the anthers with, with the pollen and with the shit. So the style comes out. Jesus Christ, control your kid. So the, 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 the style comes out of there, you know, and uh, basically presents the pollen to the pollinators. But, you know, but there's still some left over, so I wonder if the birds pick it up a little bit on there, too. Either way, this is one of the weirdest goddamn flowers I've seen. You know, I mean, this is just really blowing my mind. You know, four valve tepals with a style that presents the pollen. And then once the pollen's dusted off, uh, it becomes a female, becomes female, basically. It becomes receptive to another flower's pollen. I mean, this is just, how the fuck did this evolve? You know, but, and it's been, like I said, 85 million year history, at least, at a Proteaceae. You know? I just variations on a goddamn theme, endless forms, most beautiful, and what the shit. You know, when he's saying there's grandeur in his view of life, uh, you know, uh, when all life originally breathed into a, a one form or a couple, and what the shit, and then I'm not going to try and paraphrase. You have to look up that ending line of origin of species. But I mean, fuck me. This is just Proteaceae, everybody. And I ignored them for so long because I never seen them in context. I never seen them in ecological or evolutionary context. I just seen them. You know, in rich people's gardens in Berkeley, when you're going to steal succulents, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, just, uh, that's all, that's all that I had. That's the only experience I had with a Proteaceae, but I'm just, my fucking mind is blown. Holy shit. So this is Grevillea armigra. This is from the northern wheat belt in Western Australia. You know, and you can see the flowers. Kind of cute, huh? Look at those black styles, right? You got the, 
You got your yellow teeples. I guess those are teeples and sh what the shit. They just only well, looks like there's two of them, not four. But you got the black styles. They're not fully. Uh, they're not coming out full yet. I guess they I guess they mature a little bit. But the thing to look at here is look at these leaves. They do not feel like leaves. They feel like spines. You know, it just feels like some sort of fucked up bondage domination device. You know, used in some uh, dungeon in some uh, hitherto repressed suburb of Northern California. Or even Iowa, maybe. Maybe you got this shit in Iowa. The point is, this is a major debtor into herbivory. You know, this is just, I mean, this is really, I'm kneeling down. You got the, you know, the, the dead ones that have dehissed, the dead leaves that have dehissed on the ground. It's painful. It hurts. Uh, even through the paints, you know, I'm not sure what it'd feel like if I was naked. Maybe I'll get naked and run into this just because I'm a fiend for abuse. Uh, regardless, you can see a, some, a lot of the grevilleas do this. They got this very spiky, uh, you know, uh, photosynthetic armaments. You know, basically leaves that have just turned into spines. And I, I will say those are leaves. They don't look like uh, they don't look like stems. Either way, pretty interesting shit going on. Grevillea, Proteaceae, variations on a theme and what the shit. And uh, there's the the inflorescences. Hey, do you want to get in a van? You want to get in a van? You want to? I'm gonna go look at some stuff. You want to go buy nice with me? Come on, be real quick. I see you thinking about it. You kind of want to.